Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's virtual bridge session. It's Friday morning, the sun is shining, but we've got something even more exciting for you. And that's um, a, a session on work-based assessment from afar. Um, uh, Jane Totten from West Lothian College is going to give us a presentation and then we'll have some discussion, but feel free to stick questions into the chat as we go. Just for the record, the session is being recorded. And uh, with that, over to you, Jane. Thank you very much, Jason. Um, yeah, I just wanted to let you know that the session was just be to, um, for me to just tap, chat for about 10 or 15 minutes. I'm just going to give you uh, my experience of, of working um, the session so far um, and then just open up, the, open up the screen, so to speak, and just have a little, a little chat and discussion because I'd like to hear everybody else's views and how they're working. Um, I'm not here to teach you anything, I'm just giving you sort of my opinion of, of how things have been going. Um, just a tiny bit of background, you've probably already heard, I am a work-based assessor from West Lothian College, um, and I wasn't sure who would be on this platform this morning, so it was just to get to fundamentally, if you're not sure about what work-based assessment is, is that we um, visit candidates in the workplace. Um, and where we assess them and their competence based only. Um, we do this by a number of ways from observations, witness testimonies, professional discussions, and we help them um, gather the evidence and write their reflective accounts um, for their portfolio. Um, it's, um, I have a mixture of types of candidates. I have foundational apprenticeships, modern apprenticeships, and um, people that are generally in work and look at their competence-based qualification. Um, so naturally what we do is obviously visit in the workplace, so I've got, it. So in a sense, we've also got um, uh, electronic portfolio as well, which we use. So what's great, although am I out and about on the road, I am also um, got the remote aspect anyway for using our proof positive online system, our portfolio system. Um, so you might think, well, how has lockdown changed us? Well, at the very beginning, I was like, oh, it's fine, it's fine. Um, you know, we were used to doing some remote assessing. And then I thought, oh gosh, well, how are we going to do the observations? Um, and I think um, so it was a bit sort of bit mixed reactions, I would say, at the beginning of how, how we would do these remote observations. Um, but once you realise you're in this for the long haul, you've just got to think, right, let's make this work. The candidates really can't be disadvantaged. Um, now, very interestingly, about a year ago, um, I met Kenji because our work, um, Workforce Development Manager had arranged Development Day, um, where he introduced us to Teams. Um, it was very interesting. Thank you for that, Kenji. Um, during um, that session, um, I'm an IT lover myself. I think I was sat at the front, um, really engaged. Um, and then embarrassingly, a year later, I was not using Microsoft Teams. I've got no explanation why I wasn't. I don't know why I wasn't doing it, quite sad really, but um, wasn't using it. Um, so to some colleagues, but not to my candidates. Um, and then in early March, um, again, uh, what happened is we had a, um, a sustainability day at college. And quite spookily, um, our manager said to us, well, instead of going out on the road that day, why don't you all do what you would do in your diary from home and, in, and bringing that virtual aspect back um, into the forefront of our minds. Um, I sometimes wonder if our manager knew that this COVID crisis was coming along because she had quite prepared us. Um, so, and it was great, it was just, we were just saying the other day how we hadn't realised how much the sustainability day and the, the, the session with Kenji the year previously would become so relevant and then be virtually becoming a, sort of a norm. Um, so I think um, we just um, sort of, right, we can do this. Because of the training session, we just thought, you know, we can, we can do this. So I know myself and, and lots of my college at West Lothian College, um, I just thought, right, let's, let, we can do these observations. So using Microsoft Teams, I've been able to do the observations actually quite successfully. Um, and I've, I've been really, really pleased. What, what normally happens is I'll say to a candidate, you know, share your screen with us. So they will share um, their screen with us and I can then observe them um, working on a spreadsheet, doing rotors, sending emails, working on projects. Um, so that it, just like I'm, I'm there, it is literally just like I'm there in the room with them, which is absolutely fantastic. We've also been able to um, do um, sort of, um, if they're having a team meeting, that their own team's meeting themselves, they're saying, can you invite us in? Um, so I know myself and a couple of colleagues have been invited into, into that company's own Teams meetings. So we've been able to observe our candidates liaising and leading meetings or just liaising with colleagues and planning. 
And so that's been a great tool how we've been able to use Teams as well. I also find Microsoft Teams is fantastic. I don't see you plugging it here too, but I'm sorry to be plugging it, but it is great for also giving feedback. Um, and so normally, um, as, as, as whoever is assessor here, you would normally know when you give feedback, it's often you do it verbally when you see them. But when, it, when you're doing the remote side of the, of the assessing, you, it's just sort of text and, you, and they've got to be able to understand it. Um, so what's been great with Teams is I've said to them, like, okay, I'm going to give you some feedback. Well, we've connected, connected up and I've shared my screen with them. I've been able to highlight things that I wanted to emphasise and show them. Um, and, and also the, the other good thing is you can actually see their reaction. You can see if they're understanding you. Um, which obviously when you can't do it when you're just doing it um, as, a, as a piece of text. And sometimes feedback can be kind of complex to, to give. So being able to re, sort of see their reaction and have that one-to-one -one communication has been really, really effective. So we're obviously using Teams alongside our uh, Proof Positive platform, which we use. Um, so it's just been a great, great interactive sort of method of, of working as an assessor. Um, we have offered things like um, Zoom as well um, and, and Skype, and we can offer um, sort of just the, you know, the, the usual WhatsApp as well. I know a colleague of mine is using WhatsApp quite a lot. Um, and we, we do the traditional methods as well. You know, we've obviously been ridden our candidates and texting them. But for me so far, Microsoft Teams has just been a really, really natural and great way. Um, it feels quite sort of... Um, I'd say quite bespoke really, we're giving the candidates, you know, that own sort of personal service. Um, the only time that I must admit, I just want to very quickly say as a caveat to that, it's the only time I don't use my um, video conferences when I'm working with my foundation apprenticeships, just purely for safeguarding reasons, so that we, we don't, um, we're not allowed to do that. Um, um, yeah, and another reason we use Microsoft Teams is I've even done, we do inductions through Microsoft Teams, which again is working really well. Share them um, with the PowerPoint presentation that we normally use. I can show them um, and demonstrate to them how to upload on our Proof Positive system. I can guide them around because I can share my screen with them. I can show them exemplars. Um, and again, that side of things is working really, really well. I would say that's probably working, Teams is probably working slightly better than just ringing a candidate. Um, as I say, again, just communicate the fact that you can actually um, sort of see their reaction and, and be more interactive with them than you can on the, on the phone. Um, another advantage um, of assessing for, uh, from afar um, is being the fact that they don't have to um, rely on my availability to, to visit them. Um, which again has been a really, really good, um, a good advantage. Um, if anybody else, whoever is a workplace assessor here, you'll know one of the key things we hear on a regular occasion is, oh, Jane, if you were only here yesterday, or you were only here, you know, 10 minutes ago, you would have seen all of this. Um, because when we're going into the workplace, we're only seeing a snapshot. So what's been great now is I've said to a lot of my candidates, look, if you're in the middle of something and you think, God, this would have been great for Jane to see, ping me an email see if I can, I've got the availability, I will all, I said to them, I'll always try, if I've got the availability, I'll then sort of try and stop what I'm doing and just quickly dip in for a, a 10 or 15 minute observation with them while they're doing that particular work. And just having that sort of flexibility that we've been able to, to offer the candidates has actually allowed um, it, to, it to work really, really well. Um, so I think the challenge is that, um, I sort of initially feared was, how was I going to keep my candidates um, engaged? Um, because obviously they haven't got the, the scary thought of me coming in and visiting them on that sort of regular, regular occasion. Will, will the sort of momentum drop off? But for, for me, I just felt that the, the momentum that we keep going by, the lots of communication um, has, has really helped. And then I think what's been a really big thing is I still always plan my visits in with them, the virtual visits in, just like I was, would do if I was out on the road when I'm seeing them, I'd plan my next visit. Um, so I'm tending not to wait for a candidate to um, send me the work and then I'll book a visit with a sort of a virtual appointment with them. I will, um, I'll still say I'm going to speak to you and we'll do a, a Teams meeting on a, on a certain date. Um, and it just, it's keeping that, the SVQ in their forefront of the mind because it's a very, very, um, 
it's quite easy for candidates because it's a work-based qualification that their work comes priority so we one of the challenges that we always have is just keeping that work flow going and so that we can get them through the qualification in a, in a reasonable time um so it, 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 it's especially at these times as well obviously people are very very busy so i always just book my next appointment in um, just to keep that momentum and that flow going um, and then hopefully it keeps their SPQ in the forefront of their mind. Um, I think all the flexibility I do feel has, has, has that we've been able to offer has actually paid off um, and I would say um, in the long run I've actually been so much busier than, than I've been in a very very long time um, because I'm not now just having to wait and, and plan it around my diary and my route I'm actually um, sort of saying to candidates I'll speak to you every every week or every two weeks so again we've been able to, to tailor their SVQ around around their own needs so um, there's been a, a lot a lot a lot busier <laughs> than I was ever imagining um, so I think really from from March to today um, being a work-based assessor has actually been sort of a great learning experience it's been really fun to just learn um, it's sort of a different ways of adapting and, and, and assessing. So it's been it's been really fun. And as I say I just wanted to share that with you. I've probably talked a little bit too, too fast and gone quicker than I than I was in imagining. But really, I just wanted to kind of then open up the up the screens really and just see get other people's views and opinions and tips on how they are assessing um, remotely. Um, do you think this is the new norm? Um, and an interesting topic would be, I mean, I just do you think that this will sort of, sort of stop face-to-face -face meetings and how do you feel about that? Because um, I must admit I've got some, um, some mixed views on that as well. Although I've, Teams has worked fantastic, would I want that to replace um, our, my, the personal visits um, or a mixture? I would just like to interest to hear your views. Um, so anybody got anything that they would like to... To, to contribute. Well, we have a very practical question first of all. Bill, would you like to put that? Uh, yeah, um, sorry. Can you hear me okay? Yes, yeah, can, can Bill. Uh, basically, we've got quite a number of, uh, I, I support the uh, mechanical engineering mainly, uh, modern apprentices and, and uh, engineering and oh. quite a number of our candidates have been followed um, yeah. this, this uh, pandemic. So, the problem is that we can do quite a bit uh, remotely in terms of um, some of the underpinning knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, we do online, uh, you know, using things like Zoom. Not so much Teams because quite a number of our candidates don't have access to IT at home. Uh, yeah. um, so we've got problems like that. Um, so we try to, <laughs> they, they do have, uh, most of them have smartphones, so we do try and use what, uh, the smartphone availability they have. Mm -hmm. Um, but it is a bit of a hodgepodge. There's not really any. The problem is trying to evidence or record these things. It's all manual records of uh, contacts we've made or diary entries that we've uh, made contact with the, the candidates to try and show that we are trying to support them. Oh. Um, we've been kind of tasked to do that or show that we are doing that by uh, the warden bodies and obviously by uh, the funding uh, side of it. Uh, but we're finding that um, that is that's quite problematic. Trying to show the evidence and trying to get the the backup or the support from the employers in a lot of case um, is also a problem. Even when they're not followed, um, we're finding it's quite difficult to maintain that communication. Uh, either people are not engaging with it, or the employer is too busy with other things, um, and it's yeah. understandable. <clears throat> so that's that's a big that's the sort of issues we're kind of come coming up against with this. The practicality side of an assessment, um, I think it depends on the, the sort of the, the qualifications you're assessing. Yeah, definitely. Uh, there's a lot more practical requirements in the in the, the sort of manufacturing side. We have to, to me, it's they, they're not going to, they, they can't really vi video themselves in the, uh, in the, in the short floor. I, I don't get that sort of employer engagement and support for that. Um, so we're, we're losing that type of thing. We can't sort of just say, look, uh, you're machining that component. Can you get somebody to video that? They just don't have that. They don't have that sort of situation, uh, and they don't offer that situation even when you, su you suggest it. Yeah, I mean the sector I'm working in, Buzz, is um, sort of 
um, management and business admin candidates. So a lot of them, it is IT. So although it is so practical, the, the, the ability them to share the screen has been helpful to us very briefly. Obviously, yours is, a, is, is definitely more practical. Um, and it's a shame that the managers aren't really sort of helping you and, and committing to it, isn't it, really? Well, there's, it's, I say it's a mix. I'm not saying they're all like that, but there's, mm. um, you can understand it. Yeah, you can, yeah. That there's, they're really uh, under pressure uh, financially um, and the resources mm. they do have, to, because of the social distancing aspects of it, they're, uh, they're not fully staffed on each shift, if they're running shifts, or they're having alternate days when they've got people mm. coming in and out. Um, so that it's actually, are, you, are they able to set up, because I once did this, um, uh, someone was, is doing, was doing a meeting and they just set up their, their phone in the corner of the room or the laptop. Um, so although I couldn't actually sort of speak to them, I just was, could observe them um, watching. So I was just watching through like the camera and I was watching them sort of leaving the, leaving the classroom session as it, as it turned out. Um, is there any way that it could set up like camera in the corner and you could just watch them that way or? Sorry, have, I know I'm... I probably have to supply the camera. All oh, right, okay. <laughs> the camera yeah. Man. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> yeah, I mean... I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying it's it's not it's not, a, it's, not a, it's not a solution we can just roll up and say okay, that's how we can do it. And you may have the odd one or two that will, <coughs> uh, engage with that and try and help you achieve that. But that's that's the sort of barriers I'm coming up against. I just feel that I'm relying too heavily on uh, emails and and paperwork driven uh, evidence, if you like, and the authenticity and the checking the actual competency is a problem because I'm not physically not able to actually go and see that person maybe write a good story. Is they actually able to do that in practice? Because I'm not able to see that. And that's the, that's the kind of problems I'm seeing. Yeah. I mean, has anyone else got any sort of help or tips for Bill? That, I mean, that's well, something. We're, we're obviously, um, we use Teams as well and we've got a, quite a good uh, network um, in the college. Uh, but none of us have come up with a solution for this. Uh, on the practical side, as you say, people who are doing sort of care, but it's a lot. They seem to be doing uh, a lot. Of, a lot of their stuff seems to be relying on uh, narrative. Yeah, sorry, um, uh, descriptive work. Um, oops, sorry. And a musical interlude. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, so it's, I think it depends on the sector you're supporting. Whether this is uh, going to be something you can. So yes, this is going to permanently change how I work. Yeah, I mean, um, I think that's interesting. I mean, I do think it will. I mean, for my sector, I sort of am thinking it could change the way yes. that we work. It could, but I don't know if that would be the case for all of the sectors, like you say, like the care or the um, the mechanical and the more practical side. I'm not sure if it will, if it, if it can change. We, um, we, um, sometimes have videos. It says in SQA that you can do that, have them video and send it to you. But the only th I've only done it once with children and young people. And the thing is, you have to make sure that they're deleting the work and that I've deleted the work because we have security and confidentiality to think about when we're, we're using app, WhatsApp and different things to make sure you know, that, that we're not going against the GDPR. Uh-huh. Yeah, the safeguarding issue is, is, is a problem, isn't it? A little bit with the, I mean, I, I've noticed that when I'm with the foundation apprenticeships, we're the, we're the same. Uh -huh. um, but yes, I think you can, you can um, use mm -hmm. videos. And um, okay. for my sector, obviously, if there's no, no, no one young in it, we can, we can upload it and use that as evidence. Mm -hmm. um, probably better using Teams and now that I know how to use this Zoom, I might suggest it. But the thing is, it's okay if the organisations you're working with have the equipment and people have smartphones. What, what do you do if that's not available? Do you think we should be talking to um, the managers and asking if there could be one phone or one um, computer made available for all staff it could be a, it could be a good a good a good suggestion i mean i'm just hoping that with the times changing that more employers would start, would realize that we're going to have to get on this um yeah. on this bandwagon and we're going to have to do it this way to help um mm -hmm. 
So it's going to depend on, I think, um, how many training providers and, and colleges um, do the remote aspect, I think, as well, don't you? Yeah. And the other thing is, we, you know, we have, like, we're able to sort of gauge because we've been doing this for a long time, but um, at the moment, with residential work, you know, with the elderly, Right. You don't yeah. want to be pressuring your candidates too much. No, that, that I agree on that. I've got a few managers. A lot of stress. Yeah. 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 Sorry, Wilma. Yeah, I've got a few managers in care homes, and um, my in a bit like I think what Bill was saying earlier on that um, I I don't put any pressure on them whatsoever. Um, I just send them regular emails and just saying, "Hope you're getting on, okay." You know, um, uh, yes, yeah. and I think the, the college has been great. We, we were told don't put any pressure on anybody that is in that particular sector at the moment. Um, it, it is quite difficult for them. So, but but on your question about the new norm, oh. I, I suppose this is going to be really good because it's getting us all used to working from afar. Um, it's not the same watching, you know, on WhatsApp or a video because. You, you can't really converse the same. You know, I was watching them doing a baking with a young person and they forgot to put their plastic apron on, but you can't really just zoom in and say to them, oh, you know, what about your PEP? -E um, right. so I could sort of say that at the end, but it would have been better if I had been in a better position to say to them at the time, this is what you need to correct, you know? Um, that bit. It's just silly wee things like that. On the whole, it's working really well. Oh, that's good. I'm glad to hear that as well, yeah. yeah. But I still think face-to-face -face communications required at some point, you know, because I, I think it, it builds um, better communication with people, not not just your candidates, but the organisations. Yeah. Work and, and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny because I think for the sector I'm in, I mean, I probably could do do maybe all of it and never have to visit a, a candidate, but I don't know personally if I would ever want that to happen because I you do like going and seeing them and getting that yeah. sort of um, getting to know them, don't you, Wilma? And, and and you get to know the managers and and everything else, and it all sort of it then makes it easier because you're seeing them in the environment that you can help them and guide them at what other things they could be doing because you get to see them, it, it is good. So I must admit, although I'm really enjoying doing it by changing something different, and I think I will try to do maybe every other visit like this, but I don't know if I would want to do it all the time like that. So, no. um, well, thank, thank you. I've got a wee question I would like to ask if I get the opportunity. Stephen, go on. Um, I'm the workspace assessor in West Lothian College for the construction. Now I come from a, a, a site management side and uh, uh, that's my background. Um, now on the sites it's very frowned upon to have mobile phones. I mean I've seen guys instantly dismissed for being on their mobile phone. You know um, and but I do agree, Teams is a wonderful thing. I, I'm really starting to get my head around it now. But uh, that that that's one of the major problems I can I can see. I mean, I know guys do take photographs of their work and and, and what have you. But I still think that the, the you know because of the health and safety thing, you know, um, could be uh, f from my point of view. I think maybe people on the construction side of things are reading too much into it and I, and I can't see how um, we could we could safely use that. Uh, I just wanted people's thoughts on that, you know, what, what do we, where do we see it? That's a good, it's a good point. I mean, is there any other engineers out there that's got any ideas on there? That will be a no then. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a no. <laughs> Sorry, Stephen, that's not very helpful to you, is it? <laughs> um, I mean, maybe it's just something if it is, if it has to be going forward, that we'll we'll just we companies are just going to have to change their ways. Um, we've all had to change our ways, haven't we? So, and lots of industries are changing the ways. So maybe Stephen, that's just something that when when we induct people, that we sort of establish early on how we can do this. 
I don't know. Um, yeah, it's effectively a part, partnership with them. So I think um, in, in perhaps, uh, going forward, in pa perhaps it means having earlier conversations about what's needed to support uh, the, the, the activity. Um, and uh, and uh, again, uh, as you have said, we're in a state of change now and uh, and um, it's, it's an ongoing conversation and I think it's going to vary across disciplines, um, oh. even uh, depending on the type of business um, that we're, we're engaging with. Um, but uh, there's there are all sorts of possibilities and I think I think what I'm taking is there's not one size fits all here. It's a recognition yeah. of each circumstance, but using the range of tools that we have available to us. Okay, we've had some um, questions about um, uh, uh, around uh, the uh, the various assessment bodies uh, talking um, about um, awarding bodies uh, making their uh, guidance on assessment decisions and such, uh, which I will uh, come back to in a second. And again, around health and safety aspects, is that something that you've had to deal with at all, and Jane? We've obviously spoken about the safeguarding elements, but anything around health and safety that's come up? Um. No, not necessarily, no, because um, obviously some of the ones that I'm dealing with in care homes, I'm not actually obviously being able to, to do anything with them at, at the moment. So the health and safety aspect hasn't, hasn't actually cropped up for me, so I'm quite lucky really. Mm. And a quick question then to finish before we end the recording part of it is that um, will, it, it, I'm assuming that at some point and at some point we'll go back to being uh, able to have in-person contact, is the nature of the in-person contact going to change uh, perhaps be more focused? Uh, I, I'm not sure given that it's not, we're not going to take it for granted again I don't think. Mm. Yeah I mean it's, in, it's interesting isn't it? It is interesting. Um, I mean, everyone, I think, sort of assesses slightly differently. And, you know, I would normally spend, um, I live quite a distance from most of my candidates, so I would always spend a lot more time with them just to make my um, my journey worthwhile. If I'm travelling for an hour and a half to get to somebody, then I don't want to just stay there for 45 minutes. I want to make the most of it. Um, so I think I could probably, I think I'll probably still certainly do that. But I think also um, it, I, I'd be more thinking, well, I'll try and get out from that visit the observations that I couldn't do very remotely. Um, so again, it's just thinking out of the box and making sure that you make the best of the, the visit that you do do with them, isn't it? I think so. And um, yeah, think again about that, given that, as I say, we can't take it for granted. No, At that point, I'm going to um, end the recording with thanks to Jane for bringing up quite a few points for reflection and an interesting um, world of um, further education, how we deliver it and, um, and points for thought as to education more widely as well. Uh, with that, thank you all for attending and I'll finish the recording there.